this video, I will introduce you to template design with a really simple peer example and how to reuse it with component-based design. This is based on the civil engineering role and civil 3D design application. Component-based design is a technique to model specific construction elements from the design intent capture to detailed design based on reusable components. For this introduction, I already have some input available, a terrain, an alignment, a base axis system, and point on the ground. I am linked to the input axis system through a formula so that I capture in a single feature all the planes and axes of the axis system. The creation of the inputs will be detailed in the next tutorial. I start by creating my reusable component, here a peer part. I use the horizontal plane of my copied axis system to create the profile of my peer. For better visibility, I deactivate the 3D background in my sketch. I create an hexagonal profile. I create a constraint on my sketch. I will drive the width of my hexagon through a parameter. I create first a parameter of length type. I use a formula to link my sketch constraint to the newly created parameter. Now I can create a volume extrude of my sketch up to the point on the ground. I can measure the volume of my peer in a parameter that will be always synchronized with my 3D geometry. To do this, I create a parameter of volume type and perform a measure operation. Now, instead of repeating all those operations to create similar peers at those location, I will capture all the design operations I did in a kind of black box with inputs and outputs. It is like creating my own feature that will repeat automatically several operations in one shot. This is called a user-defined feature or UDF. In the UDF, I will select first all the operations that I want to repeat, the parameters and formulas that I want to embed. My inputs are then properly defined. I can publish some parameter so that I will be able to modify those at instantiation of my UDF here the peer width, and I publish also the volume to get it as output. Finally, I define what should be the output geometry of my UDF, here the volume of my peer. So now I will reuse my template to create a second peer. For this, I will need to define the new inputs, an axis system and a point on the terrain. First, I create a point on the curve to define the position of the axis system. I can then create the axis system. Finally, I project the point on the curve to the ground. Now I can use my UDF, instantiate it at this new location by picking the point on the ground and the axis system as inputs and change the width. A new peer is created. Of course, this is a really simple example, but we could add as many operations as we want in the UDF to create more complex geometry. If inputs are changed, the peer is automatically updated and so is the calculated volume. We have seen how easy it is to create your own user features. However, if I have to create several peers, the process is still a little painful because I have to create manually all the input geometry. That is where we will use component-based design and its pattern capabilities to automatically generate the inputs and instantiate the geometry. The first step is to create an object type for my peer component. An object type defines the low level of detail representation of the component, which will be here a UDF, and the high level of detail in a product or engineering template that can be ready for construction. We'll see this in the next tutorial. The distribution mode will copy the UDF in a peer part so that the structure has the granularity to be exported in IFC to your supplier or construction. I assign my UDF as resource in this object type and save. 
Now I am in the context of a project with a real terrain and an alignment. I will use capture component specifications to define the inputs and parameters of my different peers. I need to search first for my peer object type I just created. Then I create a pattern of axis system, here a curvilinear pattern along the alignment. Two important options there. Measurement on projected curve will be the distance between the peer projected on the horizontal plane. This is frequent in civil engineering. Tangency imposed, keep the x-axis along the alignment. This is not the behavior we want there because it means the z-axis will not be vertical. Direction imposed will put the z vertical and will still orient the x-axis in the direction of the alignment. Axis system can be moved manually by selecting them and using the arranger row. You can either define a count of axis or a spacing or a count and spacing. In case the spacing changes, the group of axes can be splitted at any location into two different groups. That way, we can have different spacing. To do this, I activate the group mode, pick an axis, and split the group in two. I can now define a new spacing for the group highlighted. Then we define in which geometrical set the UDF should be generated. We define the inputs. Base axis system are by default the axis system we created in the pattern. For the points on the ground, they can be created automatically using the projection pattern mode and selecting the terrain as input. Finally, we can change the parameters, here the peer width, for all the peer at once or on a single specification by switching to selection by specification mode. We can click on process to generate all the peers. As a conclusion, Component-based design is a powerful tool that allows you to capture the knowledge of your company inside templates and reuse it easily in your projects. At any time, you can double-click on the peer set to change the specification. Here, we move axis system to points on the alignment. And then we can reprocess. Finally, I can retrieve automatically the volumes of each peer using a knowledge report. This is a custom report and we'll look here for all the volume parameters. Now that my conceptual design is done, I can change the level of development of my project and generate a part for each peer. This can now be exported to IFC. I can still perform changes to my design. I can go back to the peer set. change the value of some parameter, for example, reprocess, and I need to update my work breakdown structure uh, to propagate this change to all the generated peers.